guys so in the last video we got the code coverages uh, so we didn't get the code coverage 100% for this class cust customer effects so let's see the test class um, for this today and get the code coverage fully okay so I have prepared the test data for this class first I have inserted the accounts using the for loop and then have used the DMS statement called insert accounts and then here the actual testing begins for this customer apex class okay so here we have got the three methods first one is get account details and second one is insert account and third one is get contacts okay so in the actual testing first we have to instantiate the original class called customer apex and then we'll test one one method first so first method is get account details so this is stored in the list of account called accounts one and we have taken the domain name as uh, energy first in the first one and for checking we have got the correct number of accounts or not we have inserted we will use the system dot assert equals method and then here first one is we will use the integer cnt1 and here in this we will use the count method so to know how many energy accounts are inserted and in the next one We'll use the domain name as uh, industry no domain name as apparel and we'll use the same as that of previous one. Okay. So this is also same. And then here in here goes the second method uh, testing called test insert. So here we have taken the account name 1 as test account 1 and account name 2 as test account 2 so here we have instantiated the actual class and we are testing this insert account see we have got the insert account method here we are testing this here now and then we will use the SOQL query here for uh, account so next one is uh, last method is test contacts so first we'll uh, prepare the test data for this we have got the name and industry fields and then we'll insert some contacts here we are going to insert the three contacts and we have taken the fields as last name and account id so here goes the actual testing of the last method so by using system.assert equals we can check this ok first run test this so we can check the code coverage also in the so here if you check the test section we have got the test run as completed and we have got no errors here for three methods test contacts test details test insert okay so here if you observe we have got the code coverage as 100 percent So here if you observe if we got 100% code coverage and we have got the 8 by 8 lines covered. So here we have prepared the test data separate separate uh, for all the methods in this class. So using test setup. So how to prepare the test data common for all the test methods within the test class so using the test setup annotation we can prepare the data in this method will be, uh, that will be available to all other methods ok so 
so let's uh, let's test this class using the test setup annotation so we'll use this test setup annotation after the test class name and we'll prepare the test data common for all methods like this first so this is so these two for loops are same as in the above method but here while inserting the contacts we'll prepare in the same annotation okay so here we have got a list of contacts and we are going to insert the contacts here so we have got the last name and account id and we are going to insert the contacts here so while going to the actual testing so in the same manner um, we are going to test the three methods the only difference between this uh, test setup annotation and the previous method is uh, we are going to insert the contacts we are going to prepare the test data same uh, under the test setup annotation only so before the actual testing so if you observe in the previous method we, we have prepared the test data uh, so here only uh, we can prepare the test data after the accounts in using the same annotation and after the actual testing begins for all the three methods okay so these testing is all same as that of before methods so first we'll test the get account details method for uh, first we have will take the domain as energy and and then we'll take the domain as apparel okay and then we'll test the test insert method so here for testing contacts we'll use again the at the rate of each test annotation so let's check whether the accounts and contacts are inserted or not in our arc okay fine so let's move to the next one called governor limits in this test classes so what is governor limits so the limits given by the salesforce to write the apex code for sokl dml etc per transaction is called the governor limits so this limit is required to avoid any user utilizing the entire resource more than other user okay so first let's see the class for how to test the soql limits okay let's take this class
so it is saved now so we have got the one method called SOKL call so here we have total 72 statements and we have got the query for account so we have got one SOKL query here and here we have got one and in the for loop we have got 70 statements so total 72 and we have using the call method here so we have got the call method and we are using the users list okay and then so here if you observe we have got one SQL query for this account query and we have got one SQL for this contacts and in the for loop we have got the 90 records ok So let's test this class for SOQL governor limits. So here in this manner we can execute the test class for this. So I'm using the anonymous window. Let's execute this now. So we have got the limit ex exception. There is too many SOQL queries. That is one not one. Okay. so here if you observe in this documentation so per transaction apex, apex limits so these limits count for each apex transaction so this table is limits for synchronous and asynchronous apex so we are now dealing with the synchronous limits so the total number of SOQL queries issued should be 100 and we have got the exception of uh, 101 okay so this is about the SOQL governor limits ok and then when you execute the another method we will not get any exception because it didn't exceed the exception of the SOQL so that's why the log is success see we have got the result here so here if you see SOQL is executed here so let's check the another class for DML governor limits
so we have got the class for uh, dml limits so dml means uh, data manipulation language okay so dml statements refers to insert update delete and delete so these are all refer to the dml statements so using the dml statement we can directly insert the accounts update our accounts delete and delete accounts so if you don't know about this dml statement you can refer my previous videos i can refer this in my suggestions okay so here we have got the method called dml call and we have inserted one account and updated one account deleted one account so here this is one dml statement here another so here total there are four dml statements and then we have got the for loop here we have inserted the contacts called 100 and in the call method here we have got 30 and for the test me we have got 30 and we are inserting the opportunities also So total number of DML statements should be 150 in the synchronous limit. Let's check whether it is exceeded or not in our class. So here if you observe, here we have got too many DML statements that is 151. So the total number of DML statements should be should issued should be 150 only. Here we have got exceeded. So this is about the testing DML limits. So important properties to be understand in test class. What are the important properties to be understand in test class? So non setup object data will not be available for test class and to access that we have to keep the at the rate of each test annotation and inside the brackets we have to keep see all data is equal to true then only we can retrieve the data from the non setup objects okay so here we have got one example for this so from test method we cannot retrieve the data hence in SOQL the count will be zero okay I have got only the test class here so how to test with fresh fresh governor limits so we can test the data with fresh governor limits using test dot stop test and stop test 
so normally one set of start test and stop test is allowed in a method so here we have got one want one class for testing the governor limits this is also same here we have got the 90 soql and then we are using the test dot start test so if you use the test dot start test and stop test we, we will not get any exceptions in the execution of the class okay let's take this class so here if you observe this test class we are using this test class to test this governor limits here uh, we are using start test and stop test to start the fresh governor limits to avoid the dml exceptions and to avoid soql limits you can use this start test and stop test see here 90 soql is run and then here we have used the start test and stop test and here 100 soql is used and then again the governor limit before the start test will be resumed again so total 100 soql so total limit is not exceeded in this class so if you run this test See, we have got no errors and the result is completed. So, in this way, that we can use start test and stop test to avoid the DML exceptions. Okay. So, next one is how to access external data for the test class. So, step one is upload the CSV file as the static resource. Okay. And then the syntax for. this is test dot load data argument 1 argument 2 so where argument 1 is the token of s object so here we have taken the custom object and argument 2 is static resource name let's take one example so if static resource file is for account object so first we are going to upload one static resource that is a csv file regarding to accounts okay from setup we have to go to static resources or we can find it in quick find search okay so we are going to
so we are going to take this name for static resource okay let's so we have the class for uh, external data test in the method get data we have got list of s object and list of accounts so in the debug log the size will be displayed and the id and name will be displayed So the result is completed. So in this manner, we can test class with uh, test the class with external data using static resources. Okay. So this is the syntax for the static resource. So for the static resource I have prepared a simple file taking two fields name and phone okay and I have uploaded this static resource into my org and I have accessed this in my class so Okay. So the next one is how to test with respect to OWD setting. OWD means organization wide default setting. So that is record level sharing. So how to test with respect to the particular user. Okay. So using the run as method so normally by default the test method runs in the system context it means that uh, permissions and record sharing of the current user are not taken into account so to text with this uh, user context we use the system method system dot uh, run as and in the brackets we use user u so let's take the user which we have in our arc So here I have taken two usernames and we will test the logic with the different user permission okay using the system.runners method let's take this class
so we have got the class here first we'll test the code as per the context of user so here i have selected first one user named travina so logic here will be executed as a pravina so we have used the rest and not run as method and we have used the query for the user and the second one we have used the second user and last one is so this is the code as so we have got the test run here so system dot runners can only be used with an active user okay we'll take the other username in my arc So let's run the test. So we have got the query exception here. list has no rows for assignment to s object so we have got success here so the result is completed so in this manner okay so in this way we can test the class using the another user in our arc using the system dot run as method okay so this is about the test class so we'll see more about the understanding the usage of uh, search class 
and then we'll know about the e test dot is running test okay we'll see that in the next class okay see you guys